Kaka. Remove the diffuser bands. What do you think of when you hear clinical trials? Perhaps, like many people, the image that comes to mind is much like this clip from The Bride of Frankenstein. A castle, lightning, and some sort of weird experiment presided over by a crazed doctor or two. Hi, I'm Alan Schur, and that was probably close to the image that came to my mind over five years ago, before my wife Sharon was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. I'd like to share some of what we've experienced since we became part of a clinical trial almost two years ago. We can't answer all or even most of your questions. Protocols differ from trial to trial. Our goal is to show you at least a glimpse of what one trial, our clinical trial, is like in the hopes that you will be inclined to seek out and participate in a clinical trial that you are eligible for. There are some dreadful diseases out there that will be conquered someday, but not without the volunteers around the globe that participate in clinical trials. Two years ago, Sharon and I decided that it was better to confront the disease head on, to light one little candle, than to sit tight and curse the darkness while we watched the disease take its toll. We had discussed the possibility of taking part in a clinical trial with Sharon's doctor about a year after her diagnosis and discussed the possibilities at each visit thereafter. I had gone on the internet to learn as much as I could about the availability of trials in the area and found one being conducted in St. Louis that appeared to be perfect for us. Before I could contact the hospital in St. Louis, Sharon's doctor's office called and told us of a trial that had just started recruiting. It was the same study that we had decided to apply for, but instead of having to drive the six plus hours to St. Louis, it was being conducted here at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. We applied, were accepted, and here we are. Like I said earlier, protocols can and often do differ between and even within trials so what I'm showing in this video is only intended to show you what our experience is and has been. To brush aside any potential Bride of Frankenstein mentality. Be certain to discuss any study you are considering with your doctor. In our case, we also discussed it with some of the very knowledgeable staff at the local Alzheimer's Association chapter office. Finally, the professionals of the clinical trial staff answered every question we had, as well as a few we hadn't even thought of. As for our study visits, we go every six to seven weeks. The primary activity for the odd-numbered visits is an IV, which for the first 18 months is either the medicine or a placebo. Since it is a double-blind study, only the pharmacists know whether the IV contains the study med or a placebo and they only know the subject by study number, not by name. The primary activity for the even-numbered studies is an MRI which is used to watch for changes in the brain, including shrinking, which is a symptom of Alzheimer's. Surveys are conducted at each visit, and most visits also include lab work, as well as an exam by the clinical trial physician. Hold on, we're almost done. Briefly, that's what it's like. Our clinical trial, at least. Downsides? There are a few, maybe. For one, it does take time. Our visits are about every six and a half weeks, and each lasts from four to six hours, and occasionally a little longer. It takes time to gather all the vitals. 
I think that it's almost like having a mini physical exam every time we go. Plus there are questionnaires each time to see if there have been any changes since the last visit. And there is a lot of paperwork tracking your progress. Fortunately, most of the paperwork is handled by the wonderful, caring, and very dedicated medical professionals that we have been fortunate enough to have come in contact with through our tr clinical trial. Far from those mad scientists you saw in the beginning of this video, people we've met who are associated with clinical trials are people we look forward to seeing again and again. Are clinical trials for you? I hope so. But only you can say. If you are a curse the darkness kind of person, maybe not. But if you, like Sharon and I, would rather confront the disease head on, to light one little candle and be part of the solution, then why not get more information and see what's available? Get the ball rolling. Make that call today. Together we will find a cure.